Hello, everybody, and welcome or welcome back to The Second Shelf and to the second Recent Reads on Sunday. It's already the 21st, so it's the third week. Um, time flies if you're having fun. So what I will do for those of you who are new, and I have quite a couple of new subscribers, welcome, happy to have you. Um, and my recent Reads is I talk about the books that I finished mainly and a little bit about what is coming up or what I'm currently reading. So I have three books uh, finished, two fiction, one non-fiction, special interest non-fiction. <laughs> um, and let's start with the first one, which was a buddy read with Heidi from My Reading Life, and that is To the Bright Edge of the World by Eowyn Ivy. Um, published a couple of years back, and I had never heard of this book, even though the author, as you can see from the lovely, lovely sticker, <laughs> was a best, the best-selling author of The Snow Child. But I haven't read The Snow Child. Didn't really the premise. Um, I, I heard about it when it was um, nominated for the Pulitzer, but the premise just didn't grab me too much folklore, uh, magical realism kind of thing. So I would have never heard of this book hadn't it been for uh, for Heidi, who had it on her TBR. Um, this book is set in Alaska. The author is a contemporary author uh, living and I think also born in Alaska in the late 19th century, so 1895 aboutish, 85 aboutish. Um, and it's about the exploration of um, a, a, an area, the Wolverine, along the Wolverine River by um, American soldiers. The land is, of course, not empty. There are people living there, but for the white man, it was uh, a new discovery. The book is then set up um, as diary. So it's a, an epistolary a novel. It's diary entries from the mission exploration leader, uh, a colonel, um, Alan Forrester. And on the other hand, diary entries of his wife Sophie, who stayed in, who stayed behind the Vancouver barracks. So you have these diff two different lives, and then there are also drawings of uh, wildlife they encounter. There are other diaries. There are letters in the 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 now of descendants of. Um, uh, the the colonel who wants to give his letters and diaries uh, to a museum. You have newspaper clippings from back then. You have letters from the colonel to his superiors about the um, the progress that he makes. So it's uh, it's kind of a like a puzzle that gives you various entry points into this story and makes it yeah more richer and more interesting because people have not only different opinions about stuff but they also see different things even if they look at the same landscape so th that is that i think was really uh, very well done how this uh, puzzle pieces fit together and enrich the novel as a whole i if i haven't said that yet but i really really enjoyed this um the the strangeness of the world for for the colonel um the female uh, struggles that the, his wife, who is uh, quite young in her early 20s, um, left alone back then. And she has quite a mind of her own. She wants to do different things. She wants to have a life of her own, which at that time, you know, was not <laughs> what you were expected to do as a wife. Um, so you had these kind of, um, yeah, uh, not quarrels, but but uh, engagements into life. But you also had the communication issues between the 
white explorers and the indigenous people living on the land. Um, and that, I thought, was also really well done without finger wagging or, you know, uh, it, it's up to the reader to see which story do I believe, uh, which party do I think has more truth to tell me. So, and all, uh, I should mention there are also artifacts, the, the, the artifacts that the descendant of the colonel wants to give to the museum. And you see there as well that artifacts might tell you a story, but it might not be the right story. I mean, you you imagine um, as somebody who finds the artifacts, a jacket, for instance, or a, a little basket, and then you think, oh, that's probably for that. But as the reader, we know the real history. So all these uh, facets of how we make our own history and whether it's true, I thought were really, really well done. And the um, description of the the landscape and the, the wildlife, also the hardship uh, in uh, of the life there. Very, very interesting. It's a slow start, I will say that. But it really picks up the pace, and then at the end, it comes together so very nicely that I can highly, highly recommend this one, despite the stupid sticker. Uh, the second book uh, was my uh, second translated work of the year. I read the first one uh, was what you see here, uh, the Kusama. Uh, that was translated from the Italian. And my second book was Jacqueline Hartman, I Who Have Never Known Man. And this one was translated from the French by Ross Schwartz, uh, published originally in 1995. And I read this as a buddy read also with Kathleen from Kathleen Ann, who will certainly return to Booktube at some point. Um, and I said translated from the French, but the author is not French, or was not French, but Belgium. Um, uh, Jacqueline Hartman was born in 1929 uh, uh, in a Jewish family in Belgium. She had to uh, immigrate, forced immigration uh, during um, the Nazi regime, the 1930s. Uh, the family moved to Morocco, Casablanca. Um, and Jacqueline Hartman returned to Belgium uh, later on. She published two or three books. Uh, when she was in her late 20s, early 30s, something like that. But she was disappointed by the reception uh, and then became um, a psychologist or a psychiatrist, I should rather say, and didn't write anything for 20 years. So this is one of her works later in life. She died, uh, I think, 2012 or something. Uh, so this was definitely a book that she wrote in the second half of her career. Um, it's a dystopian uh, novel, and the premise is when the book opens, we encounter uh, 40 women in a cage, presumably underground, guarded by male guards. They are not allowed out of the cage. They are fed. They are they have shelter. They have food. So it's not that they are starving or anything, but they are imprisoned. Uh, 39 of the women, um, no, I should probably say it the other way around. One of the women um, is actually a kind of an odd duck in that group because she is very young. She is 50, 14, 15 when the book opens. So she was imprisoned as a very young child, a baby almost, which was obviously unusual. All the other women are adult women and had been adult women since they had been imprisoned probably about 10, 15 years ago because the women don't really have memory about the before or only very sketchy. We don't really know why that is. Maybe they were drugged for some time so that they don't have a memory about the the life before imprisonment. They don't know why they are imprisoned. They don't know who the guards are. Uh, they don't know where they are. The guards don't speak to them. And then something happens that changes uh, the women's life. 
Uh, that's all I'm going to say. And then you have the second and third part of the book is the, the story, what happens then. Um, I said dystopian. It's not really sci-fi, uh, but it is definitely kind of dystopian. Um, and I think, I, I, I mean, I thought it was really good. Uh, I can certainly recommend it, but not for the quote unquote plot. You know, like if you're expecting a, a sci fi dystopian novel where the, the plot actually is at, at the core, you know, like uh, Station Eleven or something like that, that, that's not this at all. You will have more questions than answers when reading this book. And the plot is, I wouldn't say weak because that's that's too negative of a word but it's not the focus of the book so it doesn't the book shouldn't be judged according to plot rules why are they not doing that and why is this one no this for me this book was much more a kind of a metaphor an allegory about uh, how to make a life as a human when you lack any uh, connection. Because also, I should have said, the 39 women, they didn't know each other. So it was not family. Like you had a whole group that was the, the daughter, uh, two daughters and a mother and a grandmother. No, they were not related at all. So they didn't share anything. They had no recollection of a collective memory. And the book really explores the, the question, how do you, under these circumstances, um, make a life as a human being? Um, and I thought it, it was really well done and worthwhile and you, you you think about the book a lot, um, and I can recommend it, but like I said, not for the plot. <laughs> uh, the third book I'm only going to mention really briefly because that I, I finished that nonfiction book, but it's really special interest. I don't think a lot of you would be interested uh, to reading it, and that is Nancy Fraser's um, quite famous. A book from 2013, Fortunes of Feminism. And if you look at the subtitle, you can already see that this is a book for somebody who is interested in feminist theory. Nancy Fraser um, is um, a contemporary. She's now in her 80s, uh, but still alive, an American uh, theorist, especially Marxism, uh, but also feminism. And this is a compilation of essays um, looking at second wave feminism and neoliberalism. And it's, like I said, it's looking at uh, Habermas, Lacan, and if those, uh, Judith Butler, Kristeva, uh, uh, and if those names don't mean anything to you, that's why I said it's special interest. It's not a book that is, you know, a general um, a nonfiction book for people interested in feminism. If you have this special interest, if you want to have a really intelligent uh, look at feminism, second wave, Marxism, uh, this type of thing, then I can certainly recommend it. It is a modern classic, but not for most people. <laughs> Uh, so these are the three books uh, that I finished recently. And then, as I said, um, I will have a look at what's next. Um, what's up next is still this one, uh, Constructing a Nervous System by Margot Jefferson, a memoir. I didn't make any progress in this. I just, um, it's not the book's fault, <laughs> but I just didn't feel it. Uh, I'm sure you all, you readers, have this experience that sometimes you look at a book and then you open it and you know it's interesting and you will be engaged in the book at some point, but not now. This happened with me with this one. So I'm going to just put it aside for a little bit um, and then see whether I want to pick it up maybe next week or in February. 
Um, but certainly next up is this one, Cover Her Face by P.D. James, the first um, book in the Adam Dalglish series that I've, um, I'm have i reading with Terry from Miss Terry B. or Terry Talks Books. And I started another nonfiction, uh, again, a buddy read uh, with Heidi from my reading life. And we are reading Jennifer Ackerman's book about the owls that came out out last year. Uh, this is a present, a Chris was a Christmas present from Heidi, and we are buddy reading. Uh, and I gave the same book to her for her birthday, so we are now reading our presents. Um, so that is it for the books. And then I also have a public service announcements of a uh, kind because I for this year, I also want to talk about new booktubers. If I come across somebody who I think is really worthwhile checking out. And if you like me, you will probably like her. And that is Lisa from Unhinged uh, uh, Woman Book Club. You, I will leave a link down to her channel. Go check her out. Uh, she is really um, I think she has a wonderful personality, no nonsense, talking about books. She also does triathlon, and I think she has a triathlon channel as well. But I really love her her energy, uh, the way she, she talks about books. And we have kind of also similar interests. Uh, she's interested in feminism um, as well. So yeah, go check her out. Um, and I'm sure you will like her. She's Canadian, by the way, and you will subscribe. And I think that's it for this recent reads. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. As always, please leave me a comment if you're so inclined. And I will talk to you all soon in the next one.